All right, so we are here today kicking off our uh, new series on the Passion Week of Jesus. Um, as we like to kind of do around here, we like to tell the backstory to the story. And so the, the, the drama that will play out in the week that Jesus finally does show up here and walk down the, the Mount of Olives over here to my right, that drama is set up by events that take place a few weeks earlier in a town called Bethany. Well, why is the crucifixion set up by events in a town called Bethany? And the answer is simply this. Bethany was really a part of kind of like greater Jerusalem. Okay. So if you kind of look behind me and to my right, then you can see a part of the current, the modern separation wall, the, the, the barrier that was placed between, by Israel to separate the Palestinian lands uh, from Israel proper uh, several years ago. And the, the barrier wall back there actually separates Bethany from Jerusalem. So on the other side of that wall is Bethany. And what you can tell is that people like Jesus and the apostles who walk several miles every day would have no problem following the, the line, the brow of the hill here. And at some point right around here, just taking a left-hand turn and dropping down into the city. And that's what they did every day. It's just a mile and a half, two mile walk. No big deal for those guys. And Jesus only really came to Jerusalem for holidays. And on the holidays, Jerusalem was full. You know, for Passover, maybe 500,000 people came here. So why stay in the middle of the city when you can stay out here? You walk in, it's, it's convenient, and you have friends there, Mary, Martha, and Lazarus, who love to host you. It's just, it's a, it's a great setup. It's what he always did. And because that was his pattern, three times a year coming here for, for pilgrimage holidays, staying there with them, coming in and out, we have lots and lots of, you know, recording of Jesus teaching and preaching on the Mount of Olives as he would come and he would go. So we know this was his pattern. And since he had done this for a while, for years, that sets up the drama of what's about to happen. What you also have to understand is since it's so close to Jerusalem, it's considered almost a Jerusalem neighborhood, then the bad guys in the Bible story, the high priests, uh, the scribes, the Pharisees, all of those guys, the richest people in Jerusalem at that time were priests. And most of them lived, lived up here on Mount Zion. The walls were different then. They came out a little farther. Behind me and to my right is a dome church called St. Peter Galicantu. It sits what over many think was Caiaphas' house. Uh, there are other, other priestly homes directly behind the camera inside the walls over there. All this was sort of a rich neighborhood in sight of Bethany. And so whatever happens over there, these guys are going to find out about it. They're the bad guys and will eventually kill him. And so he's coming right into their neighborhood, right under their noses and doing a big, big, big miracle. And that is about to cause problems. So we're going to go through the narrative that plays out in John 11, when Jesus raises Lazarus from the dead. And it's that event, and we'll see it at the end, it's that event that makes these bad guys up here, the scribes, the Pharisees, you know, all those guys decide for once and for all, we are going to kill him. The next time we see him, he's dead. They make that decision after this miracle. It sets up the drama that will unfold in the rest of the series. And so I feel like we really need to, to go and look at it. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed that, go ahead and like and subscribe. It really helps us build our channel, which is what we're trying to do. And then if you just can't get enough, head over to thelandinthebible.com where you can subscribe for premium content. Your support there allows us to create more content, travel all around the world and film Bible sites and create those Bible studies that you can enjoy. And it helps support the Creel family in their efforts to work with Syrian and Afghan refugees in Greece. And your support goes a long way.